There's a line in the show Les Miserables that says, to love another person is to see the face of God. In many ways, that's what purity is, a life of love. And that line always reminds me of Jesus' words in the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The unconditional love of God is pure and generous, good and joyful. When we love him and we love the people he has made, I think that is when we experience what purity really looks like and feels like. Welcome back to lesson five of our journey through Psalms 1 to 50. Today, we're going to take a deeper look at the intimacy of our relationship with God and what better place to start than the most famous psalm of all time, Psalm 23. The psalm begins, the Lord is my shepherd. Perhaps the first thing to notice is that it is not an equal partnership. God and I are not co-leaders of my life sharing the job of guidance, provision and protection. He is my shepherd. Shepherds know that sheep need a lot of help. They never get to the point of saying, these sheep really should have figured it all out by now. Why are they still wondering where to go? They don't expect sheep to fight off their own enemies or find the best grass. Shepherds take responsibility for all of that. The sheep only need to obey, and that's actually a huge relief. It takes all the pressure of us to make sure that we're doing everything perfectly right. All we need to do is stay close to the shepherd and he will lead us. Jesus said in John 10, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And can you imagine a shepherd doing that, putting the life of the sheep above their own life? Yeah, that's what Jesus did for us. Yes, Jesus asks us to trust him completely, to give him full control of our lives, but that's not a punishment. It's a provision. It's because he knows the way much better than we do. He desires to lead us beside quiet waters, to restore our souls, to walk with us through the darkest valleys and to cause goodness and mercy to follow us through life until we dwell with him eternally in his house. What a blessing it is to be able to say with David, the Lord is my shepherd. I hope you find today's lesson helpful as you explore together the Psalms descriptions of what it means to live a pure, blameless and righteous life. It's a life of staying close to our shepherd's good and loving heart. Once you've worked through the questions, press play on the video again, and I'll share a bit more about what inspired us here at Our Daily Bread Ministries from Psalm 23 to 28. Psalm 24 begins, The earth is the Lord's and all it contains. God is the one who created this world. He owns it and set all the physical and moral laws of the universe in motion. He knows how life works best. In Psalm 25, we hear David say things like, Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth. It takes humility to admit that we can't figure life out on our own. David's compass was set. His starting point for a pure, righteous and God-centered life was God has the answers. I need to listen to him. Then he says this, Who are those who fear the Lord? He will instruct them in the ways they should choose. We will encounter this phrase, the fear of the Lord, many times in Psalms and throughout the scriptures. It's an expression that can cause some confusion. But fearing God is the very heart of our relationship with him. Fearing God doesn't mean going through life terrified that he is just waiting to punish us if we do something wrong. That's not who God is. As we saw earlier, he is our shepherd. A good shepherd doesn't beat the sheep every time they go astray. Fearing God is about recognizing who he is and living according to his ways. It means taking him seriously when he speaks. God is the only one who has complete knowledge of our universe and life itself. And he has given us his revelation through his word about how we are to live. Fearing God is about how we react to him and his revelation to us. Do we take the Bible as God's actual words to us? Do we make time to read and reflect on it? Or do we just pick and choose, ignoring things we disagree with or adding our own opinions or rules? There will always be bits of the scripture where different Christians have different views but we can each examine our own hearts to see if we are living in the fear of the Lord. 
let's not lose our wonder and awe that the almighty God who can wield unlimited power chooses to have an intimate and personal relationship with each one of us. He's right here, walking with us and involved in every area of our lives to protect us and strengthen us and guide us. Is this the heartbeat of our lives as it was to David, or have we become complacent at his presence? He is awesome because of who he is, what he has revealed to us in his word, and because of how gently and compassionately he shepherds us. Psalm 25, 14 builds on this with an incredibly exciting promise. The Lord confides in those who fear him. In lesson three, we talked about what the Bible means by friends and enemies and what it means to have God as your friend. We mentioned that friends tell each other things from their heart, things they don't just tell anyone. When someone loves and trusts you, they feel free to confide in you. This psalm is telling us that God feels that way about those who fear him. In John 15, Jesus said to his disciples, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Because of their bond of friendship, Jesus felt free to speak openly to his disciples. But in the previous verse, he said this, You are my friends if you do what I command. If we human beings want to have a friendship with Almighty God, we need to treat him as God, the supreme ruler of the universe. And as we get to know Jesus more intimately, we cannot help but stand in awe that he would call us his friends. God is our good shepherd. We might not always understand God's words or his ways, but we can always trust that his heart is toward us. He would never say things to harm us or make our lives miserable. Our shepherd is leading us. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. Thank you.